brighten up those dark mornings. Wheeler, Ollie, and Lecter. Mornings at the Cabin. Mornings at the Cabin, indeed. Wheeler and Lecter with you on your Wednesday morning. That's right. It's hump day. Get out there and do some... No, wait. No, don't do that. Don't do that. Get out there and do some Wednesdaying. That's right. Big shout out this morning to a friend of the show, avid listener, Jason Melanson, his oldest boy, Colby, turning 10 today. Oh, The Big Ten! Why'd you get a shout out to Colby, then? Why'd well, I mean, that means to Colby, too. Oh, okay. Yeah. But like, made like second day. Nah, I know, but it's a it's big day for his dad, birthday. too. It's a big day for Jason. Well, what's he doing? It's his, it's his boy's 10th birthday. He, he, he managed, yeah, sure he managed to do well enough for his boy to make it to 10. <laughs> All right, that's pretty good. I mean, if we're, if we're good, talking Jason. 150 years ago, like, he's, he's patting his boy in the head and saying, Well, son, you're a man now. <laughs> Go off and buy a farm and have some kids. Colby, happy 10th, buddy. Good kid. What else you got? Mornings at the Cabin, the podcast. Brought to you by the NACA Festival, Yellowknife's newest Aurora-themed event, which makes it about 57th on the list. But it seems to be doing very well. Where It's been happening all week. We have a couple guests coming in to talk about what the NACA Festival is and what is going on all week long. And you can win a trip to the NWT's Frontier Lodge just by entering at any of this week's events. Full, uh, find the full schedule at the City of Yellowknife's website. Um, Dave Zetoff, uh, who is uh, Special Events Coordinator for the City of Yellowknife, and possibly uh, Joey Walton from NWT Tourism, coming in a little bit later on to discuss the NACA Festival. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, go to the City of Yellowknife's <laughs> website, yellowknife.ca, for a full list of events, like I said. Uh, it opened uh, on Monday, and uh, today is Métis Day, and it's at the Prince of Wales Northern Heritage Center, which we got to change that name. Why? I I just I think we do. I you mean, like Charlie? I, I mean I, I I don't mind Charlie. Well, you know what? No, I don't like Charlie. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, no. Uh, uh, aristocrats? Nah, that's good. We're fine. Um. Uh. So uh, Wesley Hardest is uh, opening the performance uh, this this afternoon. Starts at one. Métis dancers at one forty five. Kid fiddlers at two. Kid kid jiggers at two thirty. Three o'clock. Métis dances. With Wesley Hardesty, all going on at uh, the Prince of Wales Northern Heritage Center. Also at the Center Square Mall is the NWT Arts Market. That one's going to be open all uh, all week long. Also, uh, the celebration from 10 to 6 at the Center Square Mall. So a bunch of stuff happening across the city this week for the NACA Fest. Mm-hmm. But we'll get a more in-depth view a little bit later on. Right now, we're going to talk about Skills Canada. That's right. Yesterday, Lecter and I went down to the Kimberlite Technical Center uh, and met up with Uli. Who uh, who uh, does the training and uh, teaching of small engine repair and uh, that kind? Of, what else does he do? It's it's the small engine repair that we were focused on yesterday. Yeah, I mean, uh, I think it's he's just, in that lab. Yeah, he's yeah. there. He just hangs out, mechanics and whatnot. Yeah, yeah. I think he might live there. I think so. Uh, yeah, he lives uh, under the building. Um, but Uli put a put a challenge in front of us. He gave us a little four stroke motor, and uh, we were to take it apart. And he gave us twenty minutes. I did it in ten. I made it in 20. <laughs> you did. You made it with 45 seconds to spare. And now, I mean, <laughs> what's funny is that, like, people are like, whoa, you, you, you're you pretty good at this. And I was like, at this point, like, this part of it is literally just taking out bolts and yeah. pulling things apart. Yeah. Like, I couldn't tell you how it works. I probably couldn't put it back together again. But, like, taking it apart, easy. Like, I'm just, I'll just take it all apart. The, the thing at the end is that, like, my my whole organization was a mess because I, I was just going for speed and taking it out because that's right. what we were doing. That was right. the competition. Yeah. Take it apart as fast as possible. Although we were supposed to, like, possibly put it back together. No. If we could. If we could. Yeah. But he, he said, like, Uli even said, he said, uh, you probably won't have a chance to put it back together. I started putting it back together, but no. Ran but it was chaos. It was chaos. So, Brendan. Yeah. His, uh, his student there had yeah. to uh, clean up the mess for you. I know. <laughs> that was definitely the crowning moment yeah, for me. Right. And not to ruin anything because, like, the video will be out. You'll the get to see be a up struggle. A little bit. Yeah. Uh, we've already ruined who, who won, quite frankly. Well, no, I just... No, I don't think so. You didn't? I think they can make up their own minds. Well... After, after this video. Sure, yeah. Okay. <laughs> That's usually how we approach these things. You and Ollie do a competition. Yeah. You decide. You make up your mind that you have won. But I mean, like, with with something like the, the cooking one, it had to be judged. It wasn't about speed. Yes. It had to be judged. Yes. And I won that one as well. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There were no judges here. Only encouragement. Only encouragement. Be- beautiful, beautiful encouragement. Yeah. And um, 
Oh, yeah. Like, it was just, uh, he, you know, he kind of showed us the motor and then showed us a list of things we had to take off, and we took them off. Yeah. So, I mean, and he even said to me, he's like, you've done this before. I was like, no, I've never touched an engine before in my life. He's like, you've done this before. I'm ah, like, shut up. You've shut done up. this before. <laughs> I haven't. And, and But, I mean, that's the thing. I, like, for that purpose, I'm not. this is not me saying small engine repair is easy, uh, but for that purpose, literally all that was was taking out bolts and pulling things apart. That's it. Yeah, I'm, I'm I'm good at that. I can I can I can destroy things. I can destroy things very easily. <laughs> Most Some of those bolts it, were sneaky though. They were hiding, and then like they you had all the different the different socket sizes. It yeah. took me that that that's took right. Me the more more time than anything was yeah. just trying to figure out the sizes. <laughs> oh yeah, the ratchety thing wasn't working. It's the I think Brendan set me up for failure. <laughs> the ratchety thing. Yeah, that thing. Uh, yeah, yeah. But it was a lot of fun. The video will be up a little bit later on. You can see us. I think, here's the thing. We were talking about how, like, we might embarrass ourselves. I don't think we did that. No, I don't. Uh, the fact that I got it apart got it at apart. all. There you go. Let alone 45 seconds to spare. Yeah. And then Brendan was looking at both of our, our engines, and, and Uli asked him, hey, which do you think you would be able to put back together quicker? Yeah. He looked at yours, and he was like, probably about 40 minutes. Yeah. This one, 10. Yeah. I had my bolts all 20. nice and he piled. He said 20. Don't Did say, he say 20? 10. He said 20. Yeah, but he was, he was, yeah. give, give yourself more credit, Brendan. <laughs> he looked at my engine pile. He said, I can put this back together in two minutes. I had my bolts in nice little organized piles. You did. That was another problem, too. That's what took me so long. I was like, I'm going to have to remember to put this back together because I was fully anticipating that that was, that was going to be my moment to shine. I'll jump off that bridge when I get to it. I did not think, <laughs> think that far ahead. I was like, just get, take them off. Get them apart. Beat Lecter. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I know I'm falling behind here. Yeah. So I need to set myself up for success yeah. in the second half. Yeah. Uh, and I didn't get that opportunity, but that's okay. Uh, big thanks. Okay. To, yeah. Big thanks to skills. Once again, I mean, they, they invite us out and we, we do these videos and we have so much fun doing them. Yeah. Um, and it gives us an insight into what they're doing. And of course, the territorial competition coming up in May. You can register until April, April 3rd, April 3rd. And the, uh, yes, the competition is May 4th and 5th, the uh, 22nd annual skills, Canada territorial skills competition. Uh, at the multiplex. So yeah, we'll definitely be there and uh, looking forward to that. It's always fun. It's always a really uh, a really cool scene when you walk in and they got all the different trades going yeah. on. You can like take uh, take a stab at a few of them. If you want to take part of a small engine, they'll probably yeah. have a couple of those there. That's right. Just don't expect Brendan to put it back together this time. That's right. I got my hands all greasy. I felt like a man. Not really. I didn't realize how big your hands were until my mitts last night. I, I like, got big mitts. That, those are those are mechanics hands. I don't think so. No, 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 no. Have you ever like I I work with Robust mechanics. Hands. I work with mechanics every day. These are not mechanics hands. No, these are these are like little soft baby hands. <laughs> That's a big baby. Have you ever seen Jaws where Quint Quint grabs Richard drives his hands? He's like, uh, you got a rich man been counting money all your life. That's uh, oh, you got rich man's hands. I think so. Yeah. Okay. Well, I don't know what those look like either. <laughs> these are. Uh, stubby little mittens. <laughs> <laughs> Big thanks to Skills Canada once again. Uh, as always, a ton of fun. Uh, look out for the video on Cabin Radio NWT Facebook page a little bit later on. Mornings at the Cabin, the podcast where we cut out all the great music and you're left with the rest. This morning's show brought to you by the NACA Festival, Yellowknife's newest Aurora-themed event happening all week up until the 7th. Go to yellowknife.ca to find out more, and you could win a trip to the NWT's Frontier Lodge just by entering at any of this week's events. Yes. One of the events happening tomorrow, mm -hmm. the Taste of the North yes. at the Prince of Wales Northern Heritage Center yes. uh, being put on by Flavor Trader. Food. F yeah. Yeah. Like, essentially. Absolutely. Uh, four local harvesters presenting on trapping, fishing, sealing, and syrup making. Four local chefs prepare their versions of fish, rabbit, seal, and birch syrup. There's no one in town doing sealing. What? Who, who, where, where are you getting sealed in Yellowknife? Flavor Trader. All right. Never mind. Go ahead. <laughs> 16-bit <laughs> size tastes of the I North. I love it. Uh, coming with an appetite and an open mind to this fusion of culture and cuisine. Uh, it says on the site, if you go to na yellowknife.ca slash NACA and you're looking at the sold events, out. it says sold out. But I got a message from Natasha yesterday at Flavor Trader. She yes. says they have six tickets left. Six tickets left, 60 bucks a piece. It's going to be absolutely worth it. Yeah. If so you, If you haven't been to Flavor Trader yet, we'll go. You got some attitude, mister. <laughs>
Uh, <laughs> it's fantastic. The food has been great. So, if, yeah, you go to yellowknife.ca slash NACA. You look at the events. You find the Taste of the North. There's a link right there to the Flavor Trader website. You can grab your tickets. <laughs> six left. Classic yellowknife.ca. Click on six different links. <laughs> buy a ticket. Love you guys. Um, Simple as that. Why? What's the problem? <laughs> What's the what? 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 Um, in a shocking, in a shocking surprise that literally surprises and shocks nobody, the GNWT has handled cannabis legalization poorly. Uh, and across the country, as a matter of fact, we've missed out on tens of millions of dollars in tax revenue uh, since cannabis real, uh, legalization. And NWT is not immune to the difficulties. In fact, there are now more delays. When it comes to uh, privatization, having new private cannabis stores and also the supply of cannabis into the actual store that the only one that's allowed to actually sell it has been sketchy at best. Yeah. Forcing people, quote unquote, forcing people back into the black market. Now, what the government is calling the black market, we would actually call the gray market because it's people that it's it's dealing in a legal substance but just not through those proper channels. I would call that gray, not black. Now, there is a black market. It's that guy that comes to your house and wants to hang out for an hour while you try to buy weed from him. It's like, no, I don't want to play PS. Yeah, okay, cool. And you can't really do anything, right? Because he's there to give you cannabis. So, like, he's You're like, not hey. even buying from him anymore. He just wants to hang out. He just wants to hang out. He's just looking for a friend, and that's fine. But, I mean, legalization was supposed to prevent all of this stuff, you know? Prevent that, that awkward moment where you're like, well... I think I'm just going to get a little go, tired. Go to bed. <laughs> and then you stay up for another four hours smoking the cannabis he just sold you. Well, the gray market would be buying online, right? Uh. So there you go. And I'm, I am I fully admit, I'm a gray market guy. You're a gray market guy? I'm a gray market guy. Yeah. I have gotten cannabis from that, uh, from other places. That's all I'm saying. How yep. dare you? I know. I'm a lawbreaker. Um, but... When it comes to the quality of the cannabis and when it comes to, like, the price of the cannabis, it, yeah. Like, I, what, and what I mean by, like, it's not really gray market, I suppose. But I, like, when, I'm, when I'm south, when I'm in Ontario, Halifax, I've, I've bought cannabis and brought it up. Right. It's cheaper. It's better quality. Yeah. The quality of the cannabis here has been atrocious. Uh, it really has. It really, really has. And, uh, the, uh, the, and the quality of a lot of the cannabis across the country. But once you get into privatized, into privatized stuff... You get better quality cannabis, right? Uh, that's my, been my experience. I've bought privately in Ontario. I bought privately in, or partly in Halifax and Edmonton, and the quality's been great. I think you could also partially define the gray market as if you, if you know the old rules for getting uh, for qualifying for medicinal cannabis yes. still apply. Like mm-hmm. basically, ah, my back hurts. Ah, here you go. <laughs> Some yeah. medicinal cannabis. Some medicinal cannabis. <laughs> you, I mean, yeah, they like. I think. I think ninety nine percent of people fall into the gray area. Yeah. So it's okay. But um, yeah, we're coming up on late uh, next month. Will be a year since the process of allowing business owners, private business owners, yeah. and uh, cannabis stores begun. Um, <laughs> which d- seems like that flew by yeah. because, uh, well, I guess not a whole lot has happened. Uh, and it, all he mentions in the story here, cabinradio.ca, Relief NT, of course, were one of the uh, the big ones that got way out ahead of it. Yep. Uh, they had put in their application yep. and uh, were told that they qualified and we're now going to a second stage. Oh, my God. It's just money. This is all it is. It's just a money grab. It just feels like a money grab. It's just like this is the one store in the entire city that is set up to do this. <laughs> now, I mean, I don't... I don't it, yeah, this like that. Ah, you're good. We're yeah. making this a lot more complicated than it needs to be. It feels like, uh, and even even members of the uh, members of the ledger are starting to be like, all right, can we can we get off our asses and do something about this? Yeah. Because we literally are allowing criminals to continue to sell cannabis. Right. And I'm not just talking about gray market stuff. I'm not talking about ordering off of Herb Approach or 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 like you know Big Buds Delivery or whatever. Yeah. Like that's gray market. Right. But I mean, they're they're selling a legit product, and you know they've got a legit procurement system in place. We do not. Mm. We're 18 months post post legalization, and like it, ah, it's just it's nuts. This the, is not the dream we imagined. Well, the, and it's 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 not just the fact that it's the only place to do it. It's the fact that they don't get any variety in. It's right. the same varietals every week, yeah. every month. It's the same stuff. You go you go <sighs> to a, a private store uh, or uh, or a dispensary downstairs. You get books of stuff. 
Like what? What kind of high are you looking for? for books. Yeah. Well, I know, but I mean, there's there's this one in Halifax that like it's like, well, what are you looking for? What do you like? What what do you like your high to be? Do you like to be relaxed? Do you like to be a little bit more energetic? Okay, you like a, a energetic with a nice flavor. This this and this. Right. This is the one for you. Yeah. Go find it. Yeah. Like this this should not it should not be this difficult. No. We we do booze real well. We sell <laughs> booze almost better than anybody. Just lay it out there, charge a bunch, tax it tax the hell out of it and it's going to get sold. Well, Cuz uh, it's so simple. Right? What do you like your drunk to be like? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, drunk. Yeah. I like to be drunk. Yeah. Uh, ah, beer it is. Yeah, that's right. Here's your beer. <laughs> Would you like to drink something that makes you never want to drink a strawberry milkshake again? Here's some Baja Rosa. Um, that, that would be great. That would be great. I would love that. Uh, it's just, I mean, we've been talking about this for 18 months, uh, at leading up to legalization and post-legalization, that this was going to be... Frankly, I'm sick of it. Frankly, I'm sick of it. Uh, <laughs> that this has been a screw-up from day one, and uh, it kind of has been. But I mean... This I, is, you know what, and and I hate it when the when the critics are right. Yeah, yeah. You know? I hate it. Yeah, exactly. Why can't we ever be optimistic <laughs> and not look like an idiot eighteen months later for being optimistic? Ah, uh, that just goes to show you, optimism is for fools. <laughs> Pessimism's the only way to go. You know what I'm saying? Prepare for hope for the best. Yeah. Prepare for the worst. Cynicism, the way of the future. <laughs> Way of the future, the way of the future, the way of the future. <laughs> uh, find out more at cabinradio.ca uh, and contact your your uh, your local uh, MLA and let them know that I don't know. You just want cannabis delivered to your to your house like samples of Tide back in the day. That'd be kind of awesome. The mornings at the cabin podcast was recorded before a sort of live, thankfully not in the studio audience. This morning's show brought to you by the NACA Festival, Yellowknife's newest Aurora-themed event. Uh, go to yellowknife.ca for all the list of events, but you won't really need to do that because we've got a couple of guests in right now to talk about the whole thing. Also, if you go to any of these events, you can win a trip to NWT's Frontier Lodge just by entering at any of the events this week, including the gala, which we have two tickets to. That is going down on Saturday. We're going to give those tickets away today. Well, I mean, we got some time. We, we could, got some time. We could wait till Friday. We could wait till Friday. It's on Saturday, so. Okay. Yeah. Well, f- fair enough. We'll figure it out. I mean, if you're just going to throw down like that. We didn't know we were going to have these till just now. Till just now. <laughs> That's right. Kateri Lynn joins us, and she brought in some uh, tickets. We've also got special events coordinator for the City of Yellowknife, Dave Zedoff, here as well to talk about everything. Uh, Dave, you know a little bit, but you said that Kateri would fill us in on the gala. Since we already mentioned the tickets, I'm going to go to her first. Let's do it. All right. Kateri, uh, tell us a little bit about the gala coming up on Saturday. It's in Detta at the Friendship Center. What's up? Um, it's actually the Detta Chief Draggies Hall. Chief Draggies Hall. Pardon me. Yeah. So yeah. it's going to be at the Detta Chief Draggies Conference Center. Mm-hmm. Um, it is a indigenous run, and it's a gala to showcase indigenous artists. So it's not even just designers. It's yeah. music by indigenous artists it's floristry there's fashion there's music there's all kinds of stuff going on yeah yeah awesome awesome so that's that's up on saturday uh tickets are 30 bucks to that how are is it sold out how are ticket sales going for that um we actually haven't checked out the ticket sales but i think today we will so. okay all right and we've got like i said we've got two we'll give those away at some point i don't know i i thought today but lecture's saying friday well uh, you can do whatever you want i can do whatever i want yes it's your show i'm gonna give away one at a time Oh. No, it will give him away as a parent. <laughs> it's fine. We'll give him away as a parent. And I told you, Kateri's already taken off her can. <laughs> it's just <laughs> distracting to some people, putting on the headphones, and that's fine. But uh, there are events going on all week long. It actually started on Monday, so there's been events going on all this week so far. And coming up today, uh, starting at 1 o'clock, it's Métis Day at the Prince of Wales Northern Heritage Center. Uh, you got Wesley Hardesty opening up uh, for that. Métis dancers, kid fiddlers, kid jiggers. Métis dances with Wesley Hardesty all afternoon long. NWT Arts Market at the Center Square Mall. Also, the Celebration 2020 at the Center Square Mall as well. Dave, tell us more about the NACA Festival in general, the whole thing. Um, yeah, so this is the second year of the NACA Festival, and it's a celebration of Aurora and culture. Yes. Um, one of the main concepts last year, and we're doing again this year, is providing uh, something for something in the day for tourists to do. Mm. So you'll notice some of the uh, events are in the afternoon. Mm. That was on purpose. Um Ideal at the museum, we have lots of traffic walking through. Mm-hmm. Um, so in the auditorium there, we found we got lots of extra attention at our events last year. 
Um, and it's an opportunity to show our culture that to the tourists that might not otherwise see that. Um, the NWT Arts Market jumped on this year, and we're utilizing them all, which is equally as awesome. Yeah. Um, we have, I think, 12 different artists each day with a table. And then the celebration event, which is actually quite cool if you want to walk by and take a look at that. You can mm-hmm. see the artists at work with yeah. their seal skin. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. I've been, I've been seeing, uh, seeing some things about, uh, obviously, about this festival all week long. This is one of the things I've actually really been interested in checking out is the celebration down at the Center Square Mall. Um, also, we mentioned this a little earlier, uh, Taste of the North coming up tomorrow mm-hmm. uh, at, uh, at the Prince of Wales Northern Heritage Center um, and uh, all kinds of things. Uh, four local harvesters present on trapping, fishing, sealing, and syrup making, and there's going to be bite-sized Taste of the North. And when you come with an open mind and an appetite, it's 60 bucks. Now, it says sold out on the website, but there are six tickets left. We just found out. Yeah. So, there you go. As of, yeah, last night. As so. of last night, six tickets. So, it, I mean, check it out. touch right now, but That's they right. might be gone. All no right. promises. Now, have, you, have, have there been any previews of this food yet, Dave? Do you know what's going on? No, I haven't tried anything. Okay, good. No. I like to be surprised. <laughs> I don't know if I'm going to go, but I mean, I don't think I can go because it's probably going to be sold out. But, I mean, that sounds like a pretty awesome night of food. Um what else we got going on uh, on Friday? There is, pardon me, uh, an evening of Northern uh, Dene stargazing at the Community Wellness Building in Dena as well, and Northern Dene astronomical knowledge, local and regional ways of knowing from three to five Friday at the Prince of Wales Northern Heritage Center as well. So I mean, this is just like all week. There's events going on all the time, like you said, for so- something for tourists to do during the day. But I mean, it's something for locals here to do during the day as well, right? Skip out on work. <laughs> Go and, and, and invest in the community and be, you know, learn something about uh, the Aurora and about culture. Yeah, we're definitely seeing an appetite now with the locals this year. Yeah. So that's encouraging to see. Last night we had um, an Aurora science talk, mm-hmm. and the people that came were quite engaged and really interested. So it's inspiring to see that because I think it's an important element to have in our events and um, even in our knowledge sharing throughout the year about the Aurora because we're the best place to see it. We are one of the best places to see it. That's right. I mean, I I love going out to see the Aurora, although I don't see it as much. I mean, p- people tell us tell me more about the Aurora than I actually see because I just never get out that late. I'm a kind of a I'm an early bird when it comes to going to bed, and the best time to see it is usually after ten o'clock. It's I'm in ca- bed by then. It's kind of nice having things like this to um, like remind us of what a phenomenon we do have. That's Absolutely. just you know, again, just a free show most nights most throughout nights. the winter. Yeah. Uh, because yeah, we get a little, we get a little jaded sometimes, <laughs> you know, I suppose it, it's gotta be, it's gotta be real good Aurora to get us out of bed. It does. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and it will, uh, Kateri, um, the gal is coming up on, uh, on Saturday, but there's obviously, uh, like I said, events going on all week. What have you been most looking forward to with this, uh, with the NACA festival this week? I haven't really been keeping up with like okay. the other parts. I've just been so busy so with busy. the gala. No yeah. doubt, no doubt. <laughs> Say for the gala, yeah. um, I've seen the setups and yeah. they are amazing. Like they're beautiful. Like yeah, what those ladies and the designers and the men have put out, like it's crazy. Like it's not a show to miss, honestly. Yeah. And with like the data center, the um, the architecture in the place is just so welcoming. And yeah. It's like such like an amazing event to show up to. Liz, Shauna McLeod, and I are like really thankful to be such a big part of this event yeah. with the YKDFN to put on um, just a place for artists to showcase their stuff. And, Absolutely, yeah, <laughs> that's awesome. No, I mean that's that's uh, uh, like uh, one of the most exciting things about this is to get to see any of these cultural festivals, to get to see the artists in town doing what they do best, yeah, <laughs> and and seeing what what they what they can make with their with their own two hands, which is. Uh, which is a beautiful thing. So we're going to see a lot of that at the gala. There is a fashion show at the gala, right? Yeah, it is a fashion show yeah. with performances in between okay. each set. Yeah. And who's going to be performing? Um, we have Tanya Snow, um, Stephen Kakwe. Nice. We have Dada Drummers. Awesome. And there's going to be food, right? <laughs> of course yeah, Copper be food. House will be catering. Oh, Copper House is yeah. catering. Oh, beautiful. <laughs> with, um, and they did a collab with an elder from Dada. Okay. Awesome. <laughs> nice. All right. I mean, that sounds that sounds wonderful. I mean, uh, tickets are available for that, obviously, on yellowknife.ca, but also at the Dead Artisan Shop, uh, Erasmus Apparel, and Ever Good Stuff uh, Thrift Store. Uh, tickets are also available at the door. Um, maybe you can message us a little later just to let us know how ticket sales are going. Yeah. Um, <laughs> since you're going to check out today. But we also, like I said, we have a pair, uh, but they are 30 bucks. But, I mean, we got a pair right here, so uh, yeah. we'll give those away at some point. Um, I, this is... Uh, this, Sounds like a really wonderful festival. I hope to get out to some of it, but 
here's the, it's a it's a it's a two edged sword because it's during the day, so it's giving pe- people tourists some, something to do during the day. Unfortunately. For us, during the day when we're working, it makes it a little difficult to go. But hoping to make it to uh, some of this stuff, maybe the gala on Saturday. Uh, I'd love to make it to the Flavor Trader tomorrow. If your employer doesn't let you just cut out work and go check it out, then uh, they're not doing their duty, I think. Civic right. duty. Fair yeah. enough. Yeah. I, I was add. working full-time here. I'd agree with you. <laughs> we'll add there's a Denny Stargazing on Friday night. Yep. And Friday morning from, I think it's 1030 to 1230, uh, Chris Cannon will be a uh, doing an additional talk about his Denny Astronomy. Okay, cool. So there's opportunities for you as well. 10.30 to 12.30 doesn't really work for me. <laughs> <laughs> well, right in the middle of the work day. <laughs> on Saturday. Oh, on Saturday. Oh, uh, you said Friday. Sure. Okay. <laughs> Saturday. I also work on Saturdays. Uh, this is what we must do in order to make this radio station a viable thing. We have to work a lot. Uh, thank you so much for coming in, Dave, Cattery. Uh, let us know about those ticket sales, and we will give away these two tickets. Thank you so much for the two tickets to the gala that we can give away. That's awesome. And uh, thanks for uh, coming in and talking to the NACA Festival. Hope it's a big success and that we can have these for many more years. The Mornings at the Cabin podcast. Wheeler and Lecture with you, kind of finishing off Mornings at the Cabin for the morning. Big thanks to the Naka Festival in the city of Yellowknife for sponsoring today's show. Find out more at yellowknife.ca about the Naka Festival running all the way till uh, March the 7th. We had uh, we had a couple of guests in earlier, Dave and Katarai, to talk about uh, Katari, pardon me, not Katarai. That's what Dave said her name was. Dave. Dave. Ah. Cattery in a little earlier on to talk about the festival. And uh, we got a couple of tickets to the Indigenous Cultural uh, Gala at uh, uh, in Detta on Saturday, uh, the 7th. 30 bucks a, a piece for those, or you could win a pair from us probably Friday. Probably do it Friday. I think so, yeah. Yeah, Friday. Yeah. Let's let yeah. the anticipation build. Yeah, let's bit. let that build to a point of no return. Speaking of anticipation, mm-hmm. 40th anniversary of folk on the rocks absolutely this july and uh we have a little announcement tomorrow morning tomorrow morning you will get the first taste of the lineup for the 40th anniversary for folk on the rocks i don't mind telling you that cabin radio has exclusive rights to these uh get these announcements that's right. We're going to get them. I mean, uh, other people will Other people will get up. them. We'll just, we're just breaking it. We're breaking That's it. it. We're yeah. getting them first. Tomorrow morning, you will hear your first bit of the lineup for Folk on the Rocks, number 40, uh, on the Mornings at the Cabin show. Uh, we are so excited. Um, all he knows, and he gave us some hints. Well, Lecter knows, too. Mm-hmm. I know one, and I'm very excited. I'm very excited. I only know one, because I, I, all he offered to tell me all of them, and I said, no. I want to find out on the day, yeah. but I do know one, which is awesome, and I'm so excited. It's taken everything to You've told Nicole, haven't you? Wraps. You told Nicole. I told her nothing. You told her. I know nothing. You, I know you did. No. And she's telling everybody. No. I know. I mean, it's been <laughs> tough. I haven't, told, I haven't told Phoenix. I haven't told anybody. Is she bugging you? No. No? <laughs> no, not really. Okay. That's, that's admirable restraint. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Because obviously... 40th anniversary, we knew, you know, leading we up after, yeah, after last year's festival, we knew that there was going to be some big plans, yeah. uh, perhaps an appetite to bring back some old acts from previous years, some of the bigger acts. Right, some of the bigger headliners. Because you got, it's the 40th anniversary. You got to blow out the tanks. That's right. And so last night on, uh, so last night I was recording an episode of Northeast with Jim Taylor. That yes. was loud. That was my knuckle. That was right into the mic. <laughs> Sorry. Holy. <laughs> I got a lot of nitrogen bubbles in my knuckles, bud. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I was recording an episode of, uh, of Northeast with Jim Taylor. He had a guest, uh, named Avery, who is just a- Avery, uh, Beaton, who some people might know. She's a, a yep. nurse at Stanton. Mm-hmm. And she's only been living in Yellowknife for about five months. Okay. And so, you know, we were talking about uh, what she's experienced, what she likes about Yellowknife. She loves it here so far. And I've, I said, I mean, you came in in November. You came in, in arguably, the, like, kind of actually the same time that I arrived when I first moved to Yellowknife. And you were like, what the hell when did I do to myself? Oh, when it's just getting cold. And I remember my first winter was, uh, a lot of people were saying, this has been the coldest winter, like, that I can remember. Yeah. I was saying to Avery last night, I think this has been arguably colder than that winter. It's yes. been kind of nasty. For larger, larger spurts, for sure. Yeah. But I told her that 
a lot of people will also say, not based on the last two summers, uh-huh. but on usually people will say that they stay here for the summers. Yes. Because the summers are gorgeous. And hopefully this summer will be. And not only that, I said you could not be coming at a better time because, I mean, even if the summer itself weather-wise is not what we all like it to be. Yeah. It's the 40th anniversary of Folk on the Rocks. Absolutely. Which yeah. is, I, no question, one of the best music festivals in Canada. Absolutely. Absolutely. Without question. Absolutely. The site, uh, the, the board, the, the incredible work that they do mm-hmm. uh, every year to put on this festival. And just the, I mean, the Yellowknife community being what it is, we come together to make the biggest event of the year as good as it can possibly be. Absolutely. And it always is. It and is. we love being such a huge part of it. Love our partnership with Folk on the Rocks. <sighs> and I'm just so excited about tomorrow morning. <laughs> You're getting a little oh emotional about it. God. This. Yeah, it's very exciting. Tomorrow morning, you'll get our first uh, release of artists for Folk on the Rocks, number 40. Cannot wait. Uh, just before we go, I did want to mention one more thing. Uh, Knack at the Knack tonight is a production of Frankenstein by yes. Manual Cinema. Uh, this has been, uh, a lot of people have been talking about this on Facebook this week. We had Marie Coderre come in the other day to talk about it. Um, this is the kind of work that you would like that the Northern Arch and Cultural Center, yeah. you know, should be doing. Yeah. She worked very hard to bring it in here, and so if you have a chance to go see it tonight, this, th- I mean, this is the only chance to play in one night. Canadian premiere. This is a, uh, uh, a theater, court theater out of Chicago. They've been tra- they've been going across the U.S. with this show. It's yeah. a huge show. Yeah, uh, puppeteers, live musicians. And all kinds of just uh, uh, amazing artwork is going to be on the stage all at the same time. It's uh, kind of combining Frankenstein and Mary Shelley's bio uh, together to create this kind of multi-layered experience with shadow puppetry, cinematic techniques, sound techniques like soundscapes and things like that. Again, immersive visual stories for stage and screen. This is the kind of thing that like Yellowknife rarely gets to see. Yeah. So this is a chance to see something incredibly unique. Go to knackt.ca for tickets, but also there's a trailer there. You can uh, The trailer was playing during the Dead North Festival because it was very apt to be playing during the Dead North Festival. It feels kind of got that like that really gritty feel to it. And read the um, reviews, and too. And read the reviews. The reviews are absolutely fantastic. That should uh, be all you need to know. Yeah, reviews from yeah reviews from uh, the New Yorker, from New York Times, Sh- Chicago Sun-Times, Chicago Theater Review, all giving it just huge, huge raves. Yeah. This is an opportunity to see something very unique, something that you know may not doesn't come along every day yeah. at the NAC. So go to NACNT.ca. Tickets are sixty bucks. It's actually absolutely going to be worth it. Um, so go check that out tonight if you have a chance. I unfortunately have rehearsal. I cannot go, but I want you all to go out there because if we make these shows a success, that means we're going to get to see more and more unique stuff kind of come across this stage. So get out there and support. The, uh, the local theater, if you can, and uh, see uh, an incredible show, what looks to be an absolutely incredible show. Thanks for listening. Check out more from the show at cabinradio.ca and by following the Mornings at the Cabin Facebook page.